Today I'm going to show you guys something really cool. We're going to clone an app from GitHub and make it cloud ready using some of the tools that we've already previously discussed, like Docker and Kubernetes. And I'm going to be showing you from start to finish how you can do it in only 15 minutes. I'm your faithful narrator, Jam. Let's go ahead and get the show on the road. Hey guys, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be showing you today how to containerize an application in under 15 minutes. Let's not waste any time and just jump into things, but um, things will probably start making sense once we start getting into it. But uh, just for reference, whenever you containerize an application, you're pretty much going to be following the um, same steps as I have um, started today. So let's just go ahead and get started. First step is going to be to clone over my uh, Git, my GitHub repository or whatever um, application repository I'm using. Today, I'm going to be using a Flask application repository from our good folks over at CodeCloud, um, which they provided in a public repository, which is open to anyone. So you can uh, you would also be able to run this, these commands that I'm running um, on your end. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and clone this repository over into this week 11 directory. Okay, cool. Next step's going to be, let's go ahead and start working on our Docker file. Okay, so since we're only going to be um, deploying a simple application, we don't need to make anything too uh, fancy for our Docker file. So let's go ahead and just do a from, and for my image, I'm going to be using a Python image since Flask is a Python package. And I am going to be using something called Alpine. And what Alpine is, is basically a very... Um, lightweight uh, version of a Docker image. Um, it's offered for lots of different uh, Docker images, not just Python. Uh, many different Linux distros have it, um, as well as I believe Ruby, uh, lots of the Red Hat uh, Docker images as well. So uh, it's always a good thing to try and use the more lightweight image if you can. Uh, so since I'm using a very simple application that doesn't actually rely on a lot of dependencies, I'm fine just using the Alpine image. Next things next, I'm going to set my environment variables for this one. I'm only going to need to set one, which is going to be this Flask app variable. Uh, and which is going to be app.py and you'll see here it corresponds to this app.py file in the actual um, application directory. Okay, next I'm going to set something called my working directory, which is going to just be the path that I want the um, container to use for uh, running all of its application files and running um, the commands. Next, I'm going to need to actually install my dependencies. And I can do that by running a run command in my Docker file and then passing it the uh, whatever I actually want it to run. So I'm going to be running a few pip install commands. And I'm going to be installing Flask and I believe Flask MySQL. Okay, next step's going to be to copy over my application files or my artifacts. And that's going to be very simple, just copying over this simple web app last directory over to this application directory. And then my last step is going to be to expose port 5000. And then very last step, oh, to CMD. I'm going to need to run a command uh, within my container. This is going to be the thing that uh, lets the container know what it's supposed to be doing.
And for my command, it's going to be flask run host. And this isn't anything special. Um, so just to quickly explain, this bin sh uh, minus c is just saying that I would like to run a command on the shell. And that command is going to be this flask run uh, localhost command. And this is just the command used to run a, a flask application. OK, now that I have this Docker file all set up, uh, I can go ahead and save it. And typically what you'd want to do is just build the image and run it. But that is a little time consuming and the run command can get a little long and wily. So what I'm going to do instead is just go ahead and create another file called a Docker Compose file and just um, deploy my application from there. And this is useful in case you want to um, add any other components to your application and kind of orchestrate it a little bit. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and do version three services for services. We'll go ahead and call it flask app. And I'll give it a container name. It's over a little bit so you guys can see. And for my container name, I'll just go ahead and give it the same name, Flask App. I'm going to give it this um, next line called build, which is going to... Um, essentially build this docker file uh which is um located in the same directory as this docker compose.yml that way that'll save me the step of having to actually build the image and having to declare it within the um docker compose.yml docker compose will just go ahead and do that for me next let's go ahead and declare ports i'm gonna have this forward over to my port 8000 from port oh. 5,000 on my container. Next. That actually is going to be my last step. What I could do from here is um, declare a few other things like environment variable or even add a mount. But since I'm just kind of deploying this application and testing to make sure it works, this is fine for right now. So next thing's next. All I need to do is go ahead and save that Docker compose.yml file. And then uh, you can either do this through the CLI, but um, I'm going to be running the rest of these steps through Visual Studio Code. So if you're using Visual Studio Code, feel free to follow me. Otherwise, all of these um, steps are repeatable through the CLI. So next, things, uh, next thing I'm going to do is go, uh, go ahead and compose up. And you can do that very simply on Visual Studio Code by right-clicking on the uh, Docker Compose.yml file and doing Compose Up if you have the Docker extension installed. And looks like it ran all of my steps. The build ran correctly. And looks like I do have my containers running. So if I go ahead and flip over to my Docker extension, you'll see a whole bunch of different um, info. But this is what we really want to look at uh, up here, the Week 11 Flask app. So this is the container that was deployed just now. So if I go ahead and attach shell, or no, I don't even have to do that. Let me go ahead and open this in browser. And if I drag over my Google Chrome page here, you'll see in my localhost 8000, this is the Flask application. And just to make sure that uh, this is actually routing correctly, if I go back over here, if you type in how are you in the um, address bar up here and go back up to your application file, you can actually poke around here and see that uh, whenever you do route to how are you, um, it is supposed to return this I am good, how about you statement. So we can tell that everything is functioning correctly. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you would um, containerize an application.
Uh, and we got it done in under 10 minutes. And since we did it within um, using our Docker Compose file, whenever we're done with this application, we can just simply compose down and that will tear down all of the resources for us. So if I go ahead and flip back to this Docker uh, extension, give it a second and refresh, you'll see, yeah, my container's down, all my resources have been torn down, and now I have a very simple um, environment for deploying my application if need be. Uh, and if I wanted to, I could actually go ahead and check on that local host again. Let me go ahead and refresh that page. Yep, and we'll see that it's no longer working. But if I ever wanted to bring it back up, it's just a very simple um, task of composing it back up. Goes back up, refresh the page, and voila, my application's back up. If I'm done with it, I can always just compose down again. And whenever I need to make any other changes to my application, uh, for example, if I were to have any other uh, dependencies that I needed to install, uh, I could also simply just add it onto the Docker file. And whenever I deploy it again, or sorry, compose up again, Docker Compose will pick up those changes within my Docker file and create another build for me. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe as always. And if you like this kind of setup in under 15 minutes kind of stuff, please just let me know down below in the comments. And I will see you next time.